to be in Bible study tonight. Yes. Amen. We want to welcome everyone to the Bible study this evening. There's others on their way. There are some people that aren't going to be here. They're working late and um, I'm just a reduce gear preparing for their son to come. Okay, so let's be praying for them. Okay, and those that are not with us, we do want to remember Friday night, okay, 6 p.m. Uh, we're going to have OLR. Now, I'm not going to announce a dinner because we're going to check on the bowling alley. Mm -hmm. With the bowling alley on base is open, we're going to go bowling. Okay, have a good time. And so uh, we'll see. We'll let you know what's happening on, on Friday. And they've got a they got a burger place in there. Okay, so it'll be a good time. Um, we're going to take a little diversion tonight. We've been teaching out of the book of Acts. I think we got up into chapter 15. Okay, but we're going to go ahead and be praying about this and uh, thinking about teaching some uh, teaching on marriage. Okay, and, and marital issues. We've been preaching about building our life on the Word of God. So we want to look into the Word of God and see what it teaches about marriage. Okay, so and I know that there are folks here that are single also. Okay, but maybe someday. Okay, that's your desire. Uh, you do want to get married someday. Well, you'll have a, have a foundation of the Word of God that you can build upon. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and pray. We'll ask the Lord's blessing tonight on the Bible study. Reverend Torres, will you pray, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, loving God, for this wonderful night, oh God, to listen to what you lay on Pastor's heart, oh God, to teach us. Please help him teach, oh God, and please let us have receptive hearts and ears to apply these things in our life. For your glory, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So, first of all, uh, marriage is honorable, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13. Okay, the Bible also tells us that if a man finds a wife, finds a good thing. It's good, okay, to, to live in holy matrimony, okay? It's God's desire for men and women. We know that fornication is a sin. It's wrong, okay? That's being together outside of marriage, having a sexual relationship outside of marriage. We know that that is sin, and God instituted marriage. We can go back to the book of Genesis, and there in chapter 2, beginning in verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one Flesh. So we see from the very beginning that God gave us really some instruction on how to make a marriage succeed. Okay, Adam did not look at Eve as some separate individual. Okay, he considered her to be part of him. Okay, same bone, same flesh. Okay, and also, brother and sister, uh, the Bible goes on to tell us there who is to be first. Now, we know that God is first in the life of a believer in a Christian's life. God is to be before anything. Okay, but after that, okay, we have here, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Okay, so we see right off the bat that they were to be one. They were to be a unity, okay, no, though we are two separate people as far as, you know, we're not the same, uh, that as far as physical bodies, but the Bible says we become one flesh. Mm -hmm. There is to be a unity, okay? And, you know, the word un unity itself comes from a root word that means one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are to be one. We're not to be uh, separate from one another. We are not to be doing our own thing, okay? And this is the example that we see from the very beginning. We can go to other places in the Word of God, okay? We're talking about being in unity, talking about being one flesh. You know, before you decide to marry someone, or if you already are married, okay, we have to make it up in our minds that we're going to head in the same direction. Yes. Okay, if you're not married, 
You have to find someone that uh, wants to live life the way that you do. Yes, sir. Okay, and as a Christian, we want to live our lives for God. Okay, so the Bible gives us direction. We could go to Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. These things really should be covered before people get married. And it's not always that way. You know, we, you, you may have two people that are not Christians and one of them gets saved. The Bible teaches about that also. Okay, and we'll get into this, maybe some of that a little later on. But, you know, if someone is looking for a spouse, the Bible tells us in Amos chapter 3 and verse 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? Okay, you have to cross this bridge before you make a decision to marry someone. Are we, you know, these are things that have to be talked about. Okay, and that is really, uh, even after uh, someone is married, that is married, that is one of the biggest problems that people face is lack of communication. Okay, you got to learn how to do that before you get married. Mm -hmm. Okay, to talk to one another. And there's other things that we could look at. We could look at selfishness, which is contrary to being one flesh, being united. Okay, we can't be selfish. We're walking together. It's not all about our own way. It has to be uh, both, okay, working things out together. Okay, come on in. I believe I hear somebody. Okay, so can two walk together except they be agreed? Second Corinthians chapter 6, beginning in verse 14 here. Okay, now if I'm a believer, okay, where should I be looking? Okay, what kind of person should I look for as a spouse? I need to be looking for another believer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not only what we read there in Amos, but 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Okay. If you're a believer and you're already a Christian and you decide to enter into a relationship with someone who is not, you're, ask, you're just asking for problems. Okay, now, again, we understand there are situations where people are already married. One of those people may get saved and become a Christian. The Bible teaches what to do in those cases. Okay, God doesn't break the marriage up. God keeps marriages together. Okay, but the Bible teaches about winning someone by the way that you live or your conversation. Okay, it teaches us that if... if uh, the unbelieving is pleased to dwell or stay with that believer. Don't put them away. Stay with them. Okay, but these are, that's a different subject. We'll get into that in a moment. Okay, so we're talking about unity. We're talking about uh, walking together. We're talking about being uh, yoked together with someone that is like-minded. Okay, and we know that... Uh, in a marriage, okay, the unity and, and the like-mindedness, the unselfishness, okay, the the attitude of this person it being a part of me, okay, it all stems, okay, just like uh, our relationship with God and this likened to a marriage many times, mm -hmm. it all stems, brother and sister, it all comes from a love. Yes. Okay, God loves us and God wants us to be united with him. Amen. Okay, even though we have done wrong mm -hmm. and our sins have separated between us and God, God is the one who made a way for all of us to be reconciled to him through the death of his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have that example of God being love and, and our marriage is to be built upon God, is to be built upon love, okay, and it is to be built upon the word of God. Okay, so we're talking about love here and unison and oneness, okay, a, 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 uh, a oneness with one another and with God, okay, and, and love. We could go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and the Bible begins to tell us what real love does, what it's like. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. Can I understand when you first meet someone, it's really another L word. Okay, it's another four-letter L word, lust. Okay, and, you, and that's important. 
Okay, marriage is not a business deal. <laughs> it's not a business proposition. Okay, and I, there are people that do stuff like that. Hey, let's get some BAH going here. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, you you have to have a desire to be with that person. Yes. And if that's not there, I tell people, if there ain't no zing, don't buy no ring. <laughs> Okay, because you because sometimes, brother and sister, um, uh, that's what you got. Okay, that's what you that'll help you through, and uh, you, you got to be you got to be wanting to be with that person for the rest of your life. Okay, so we talk about love. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter thirteen, and we're going to begin reading in verse four. And all of this, you know, of course, we can go back and we can uh, look at it on Facebook or YouTube and get the notes of these different verses of scripture are. Uh, located in the Bible, okay? But let's begin here, 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. He's talking about charity, which is love. Talking about love being a foundation, God being a foundation, his word. This is straight from the word of God. What does love do? Okay, charity suffereth long and is kind. Okay, now the Lord expects us to take these things and apply them in our lives. Okay, if we love someone, we are to be long-suffering and kind to them. Yes. yes. Not short-tempered and a jerk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's not the way we're to be. Yes. Okay, we're to be long-suffering and kind. Okay, charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. We dealt earlier with selfishness. Okay, it's not all about me. And you can take these things and you can apply them really to any relationship. Yes. Okay. You can apply them in any relationship. It's not all about us. And if we're living our life when it has to be all about us, we're going to be disappointed. Because that's just not the way the world works. Right. The sooner we come to that realization, okay, it just, it, it, that's not the way the world works, and that's not the way that God works, brother and sister. Okay? Doesn't vaunt itself. It's not puffed up. It's not, not uh, arrogant and proud. Okay? You have pride, you have contention. That's the word of God, and that's the truth. Sometimes people butt heads because both of them are being stubborn, hard headed. Okay? We're not going to get anywhere that way. We have to be willing to, to work with one another. Let's go on now. Verse 5. Did not behave itself unseemly. Okay, it doesn't act inappropriately. Seeketh not her own. Love doesn't seek its own. Is not easily provoked. Okay. And there's a hot button topic right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, Pastor, until somebody pushes my button. And it's all over but the shout, and then and not easily provoked. Okay, God's God's uh He doesn't pull any punches with this, okay? Seek not our own, not easily provoked, thank it no evil. Okay, you have to learn, as Pastor Olson has been sharing, push things away. Okay, because sometimes things are misunderstandings. Yes. Okay, and, and the devil doesn't want you to get along. Right. He wants there to be problems. Mm -hmm. Well, I called her and she didn't answer the phone. She's avoiding me. Huh? Well, maybe she's in the bathroom <laughs> and she didn't see it. <laughs> maybe something else happened. Right. Thank it, no evil. Okay, let's thank the good things, okay? Let's not automatically jump to con conclusions. Okay, think of no evil. Okay, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. When you have love, you endure. Okay? Brother and sister, it, it, 
you know, marriage is not some fairy tale. People think that I'm going to get married and it's going to be like uh, Cinderella and Prince Charming. Yeah, it's going to be just like that, a fairy tale. Not real like that. Especially when you're newly married. Because you have to learn to live with one another. You're used to doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. Right. And all of a sudden, you need to be concerned about someone else. Mm -hmm. It's not all, you don't have, it's not all about you anymore. Okay, are you here? Yes, sir. Well, I just won't get married because I want it to be all about me. <laughs> 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 you know what? You find you somebody who cares about you, it'll still be all about you. You can make it all about you, and he'll make it all about you. You'll be getting a double portion of all about you. <laughs> okay, anyway. Okay. But uh, let's let's go on here, okay? We want to go to 1 John chapter 4. And I want to be in verse 20. Now, we know that God is love. Okay, it also tells us that in John, 1 John chapter 4. But let's go to verse 20 here. For man say, I love God, and hated his brother. He is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen... How can he have God, love God whom he hath not seen? You're talking about love. Okay, we saw what love does. We say that we love. Oh, I love God. Well, if we love God, now I know it says brother, but what about, you know, my wife is my wife, but she's all my, also my sister in the Lord. Okay? And I'm to love her. How can I say that I love God if I don't love her and treat her right? Hmm? That doesn't jive. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Because if I love God, I will love people. It yes. works that way. Yes. And when we love people, we will endeavor to treat people right. Correct. Okay? That's why love is the fulfilling of the law. Love works no ill. The book of Romans, the Bible tells us, toward its neighbor. Love does not do people wrong. If we're deliberately trying to hurt somebody, and cause them harm and pain and, and, you know, all of that garbage. That's not God. Okay? God doesn't do that. God doesn't play mind games with people. He's very straightforward and sincere. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we should be with one another. Right. Okay? Because God wants uh, a, a man, as we read there out of Genesis... To cleave unto his wife. For them to be one flesh. God doesn't want people. Uh, joining together in marriage. And then just getting divorces. Okay, that's not the way that the Bible teaches. That's not biblical. There are very few. Like three of them. Reasons in the Bible. That a person that is married. Okay, can get remarried. Number one is death. That doesn't mean you go off and kill somebody. <laughs> okay? Number two is adultery. Okay? If someone commits adultery on their spouse, as long as that spouse doesn't join themselves back together with them in a sexual relationship, they are free to leave that person and get remarried because that person that committed adultery broke the marriage bond. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's number two. Number three is desertion for the gospel's sake. And we can read about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I believe that it is. Okay, someone's a believer and the other person doesn't want to live with them because they're a Christian. They take off and leave them, desert them. Paul said that that brother or sister is not under bondage in that case. But that's the only three reasons in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does it say because we can't get along, we can get a divorce. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have to be together. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say that you have right to get a divorce and get remarried to somebody else. Right. Okay? God wants to promote unity. He wants to promote, you know, you mean to tell me we've got God on our side working with us and we can't work through these problems? Mm -hmm. God's not able to help us. God can help us. Okay, he can. Okay, we've asked you to pray for my mother. She's going to have surgery uh, tomorrow. Okay, I thought it was today, but it was a pre, 
uh, thing today. Tomorrow's the actual surgery. It was a little miscommunication. Okay. Her and my dad have been married for 60, I believe 65 years. Okay. Well, they had it easy. My mother had eight kids. Okay. Hats off to her. Huh? That was not easy, raising eight kids. Okay, it wasn't easy for my dad to provide for eight kids. But you know, they did not back, and they were not Christians when they got married, and, and but people did not think the way they do now. Mm -hmm. Society did not accept all this divorce and the drop of a hat stuff as they do now. Mm -hmm. They knew when you got married, it was for life. Hmm? Made a vow before God, even if you weren't Christian, till death do us part. That's probably one of the most common ones that you hear. No wonder people want to do their own vows now. They want to change things because they want to take those kind of things out. Right. But anyway, they did it. They stayed together. Mm -hmm. Okay, Reverend Rossi's parents just celebrated their 50th. Mm -hmm. They've stayed together. Mm -hmm. If they can do it, can. others can do it. Yes. Okay. Yay! Welcome back. It's good to see you, man. Can I hug you? Yeah, you can hug me. Hi, honey. Here we are, back on camera. <laughs> yes, this is here we are. Have a seat. Okay, we're studying about marriage. And we've just got done studying a little bit in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7. We talked about charity, suffering long, and being kind, and not bonding itself, dealing with being unselfish. Now we've been talking about how that God, what God has joined together, he doesn't want any man to put it asunder. Mm -hmm. It's not God's desire for people to get divorced. That's right. Okay, I gave the example of my parents who've been married for 65 years. Herman Rossi's parents who just celebrated their 50th anniversary. They can do it, we can, others can do it. Yes. Okay, but if we're going to do it, we're going to have to build our marriage upon the Word of God. Yes. We're going to have to love one another. We're going to have to do as the Bible has taught us become one flesh. Okay, we're united. We're not one going this way and one going the other way. If we do that, what's going to happen? going to end up apart. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're walking together, okay? We're walking together. We're, we're uh, following God together. We're building our life upon the word of God, okay? Society wants to promote divorce, but the Bible teaches us that marriage is not to be put apart. Matthew chapter 19, beginning in verse 3. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that which he that which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. You know what that means? Hold on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hold on to his wife. Don't let her go. Mm -hmm. Okay, people, you know, I mean, I hear about it all the time. People let their wives go for the stupidest things. Yes. Because all they want to do is play video games. Really? Because they want to go drinking with the guys. Isn't your wife more important to you than some, some guys living in the barracks? Huh? That's your wife. You're one flesh. No one other than God should come before her. A husband really should say, she comes before me. Yes. You hear? Yep. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Somebody's somebody's trying to hijack your car. What you gonna do? Throw your wife in front of them? <laughs> Aren't you gonna get out there and defend her? Huh? <laughs> you got you know you went out to eat. And you got some leftovers, and maybe there's you know just. Some nice leftovers in the fridge. Is there's only enough for one? Huh? You're not gonna try to eat all of that real fast and say sorry, babe. 
You're too slow. <laughs> yeah, put her first. These are practical things. You know, some of you are looking at me like I'm crazy, but it's practical things. Yes. Yes. You know, we talk about it, but then you have to put it in practice in your life. Right. You have to think about the other person. Are you here? Yes. Okay. What if they don't like something? Your attitude shouldn't be tough. Too bad. I don't want to put the toilet seat down. <laughs> what about love? <laughs> what about love? Huh? Are you here? Not preferring themselves. But preferring others. Okay, let's go ahead and go on. Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain, which means two, shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Okay, and they said unto him, why did Moses command to give a writing of divorcement? If you go back and read what happened, Moses did not command them to do anything. They came to Moses with his garbage. Are you here? Yes. Go read it. Moses didn't come to them. I command you to put your wife away for these reasons. They came to him. And he went to God and, and, and uh, let's, let's, okay, look at Jesus' response to them. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. They were going to do what they were going to do anyway. Yes. Moses didn't tell them to do it. Okay, he allowed them to do whatever they were going to do. I told somebody something along these lines today. They asked me, should I say something about this situation? You can, you can say this, but you know that dude's going to do what he wants to do. Because yes. he don't want to listen to God. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to listen to God. So but Moses was basically telling them, hey, you do what you want to do. Right. Not that it's okay, right. but that's what you're going to do anyway. Yes, sir. Okay, and that's what they did. And they tried to blame it off on Moses. Okay, but God, the Lord told them from the beginning it was not so. Okay, again, we can't just be, I'm going to get a divorce because we're having a fuss. That's not biblical. Work out your problem. Okay? Well, heavenly Lord. <laughs> are there any people here that are married that ever had to overcome a fuss? Me? <laughs> yes, we have. Yes. Okay. We have. Yes. You've got to work through things. That's right. Okay. That's the way that it is. And God helps us. Okay. All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. It's dealing with the same subject. You can't just get a divorce for any reason. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. He's dealing with some other things here in marriage. We'll just go ahead and read. Let me, let's just begin in verse 1. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. He's talking about unmarried people. You're not married. You start touching around on each other. What do you think is going to happen? Huh? Come on now. Pastor, I had an accident. That ain't an accident. Oops. Huh? I slipped up. What do you mean you slipped up? What'd you do? Hit a banana pill, all your clothes flew off. You bumped into them, all their clothes flew off. Next thing you know, that's not an accident. That's deliberate. And to avoid that, wait till after you get married. To start touching around on each other. Because if you don't, your flesh is going to want to do other things. That's just basic 101. Yep. Common sense. Huh? You know, uh, now I may shake somebody's hand. You don't see me go hugging around on the girls. I'm going to do that. Huh? Now my wife, girls are huggers. My wife hugs. The, so 
some of the guys, I don't get all jealous because she, she's like a mother to them. Okay? But if you're younger, okay, you probably not, shouldn't be doing that. Okay? Somebody might get the wrong idea. You might be totally pure in your motives and everything. But hey, man, young men don't need a whole lot of uh, egging on. Okay? Pastor, she smiled at me. I think she <laughs> likes me. <laughs> Brother, she's happy. <laughs> she smiles at everybody. <laughs> Pastor, that girl looked at me. I think God wants her to be my wife. Bro, you want her to walk around like this? <laughs> Come on. Okay? Be careful what you do. Okay? Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Now, we're talking about making a marriage work. Can't be selfish. You got to be mindful. And I'm going to talk about something. This is in the Bible. So don't be getting all embarrassed. It's real life. Okay, you can't be selfish. Maybe you don't feel like doing something. And maybe they do. Don't be selfish. Okay? Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife had not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband had not power of his own body, but the wife. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Oh, honey, I'm tired. Sister, bring him a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> you better get untired. <laughs> you better pray, to, pray your strength in the Lord, buddy. <laughs> Time for you to go to work. <laughs> Your life. Okay. Oh, honey, I have a headache. Go get you a glass of water, dude, and I ask her, What's that for? Oh, I'm just bringing this in here. I don't have a headache. All right. <laughs> Got that one crossed off the list. You need to take care of one another. Yes. People have needs. You want your spouse going around all full of desire, part of your marriage, okay? You take care of one another in the physical, sexual realm. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. In a marriage, it's honorable. The marriage bed is undefiled. It's not dirty right. in a marriage. Amen. Okay? I'm not trying to be crude or anything like that, but just kind of a little bit of sugar... Helps the medicine go down type of attitude. A little bit of humor helps us to take things yes. that are really pretty serious. Okay? As the saying goes, if you don't chop your wood, somebody else will. If you don't take care of them, somebody else might come along and try to take care of them. Okay? Take care of your spouse. Okay? Let's go on here in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency or your inconsistency. Okay. There needs to be consent. Okay. We're not going to do anything. We're, we're Okay. We're, it's a mutual consent. Not one defrauding the other one. I'm mad at you. So I'm going to cut you off. That's not biblical. Huh? You don't use your body as a weapon against your spouse. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's go on. Okay, chapter 7, verse 5. Let's go down. I'm going to go down a little bit. Okay, now we know that Paul was... At this time, single. 
Okay? Let's go down to verse 9. He's dealing with people being single. He wants people to be like him. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Okay? In other words, he's telling, you know what? It's better. For, he's not talking about burning in hell. If you, if you really uh, want a wife or a husband, it's better for you to go ahead and find someone. We already know the prerequisites that we talked about. Then for you to go around, okay, burning with lust. Are you here? Yes, sir. Okay, now you can pray and God can help you to control yourself, but it's better to marry than to burn, okay? And, if, and, and remember we talked about, uh, earlier we talked about reasons for, for divorce. Let's go to verse 10. And under the married I command, yet not I, Okay, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away the wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord, that if any brother have a wife that believe it not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let her not put him, let him not put her away. And the woman which has a husband that believe it not, if he be pleased to dwell with her, let him, her not leave him. We can also go to 1 Peter chapter 3, deals with it. Peter deals with this. Okay, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else will your children unclean. In other words, if you get saved, somebody gets saved, and their spouse is not a Christian, they want to stay with you, stay together. Yes. Okay, stay together. You have children. He's not saying that you save them. He's talking about sanctification. Your marriage is holy before God. Yes. Because you're married, and you have kids. You didn't have those children out of wedlock. You had them in a marriage. God considers that holy, okay? But if the unbelieving depart, this is what we said earlier, let them depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases that God hath called us to peace, okay? So that backs up what we said earlier, okay? Now we want to transition. We're dealing with the fact that you can't just get a divorce for any reason, and uh, we dealt with uh, uh, taking care of one another in, in the sexual uh, realm of your marriage, and that's important. Yes. Okay. As we've said, it's not some business endeavor. Right. Okay. That's important, especially you know, um, you're younger and whatever. Okay. People, people have their needs, and you take care of your spouse. Okay. Let's look at some biblical marital roles. Okay. Now, some people don't like this, but this is what the Bible teaches. Yes, we are one. Are we one with Christ? Yes, sir. Are we united with him? Amen, sir. Who's the head of the church? Church. Oh. So we are one with him and we are united with him, but he is the head of the church. Yes. Okay. And God has established a uh, leadership in the family. Okay. There is a, there is a uh, plan that God has and we can see it from the very beginning. Okay. But we go, let's go now to. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're in 7 there, a couple, few chapters over, we're in chapter 11, look at verse 3, okay? And we're a little bit over time, but you want me to keep going for a little bit? Are we okay? Cover some of this? Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, but I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God, okay? In a family, the man is to be the head of the family. I know that's old-fashioned, but that's the way that God ordained it. Mm -hmm. Society wants to change everything. But we're not following society. We're following God. Yes. Okay? And we follow God at works. Okay, Ephesians chapter 5. Okay, and this is a really good one to mark in your Bible. Absolutely. Okay? To give you some direction, both man and woman, for the marriage. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to begin reading in verse 22. Okay, and you hear people talk against this. I'm not getting married then. I don't know some guy telling me what to do. What you're saying when you say stuff like that is against the word of God. You're saying that the word of God is wrong then? The word of God's not wrong. Maybe your attitude about the word of God is wrong. And if you have that attitude, your attitude about the word of God is wrong. Okay, wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. 
Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Okay? That doesn't mean he's supposed to be some kind of dictator. Okay, let's look at, let's keep reading here. How is he to deal with the wife? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You know, a wife is more apt to be willing to follow the leadership of her husband if he has proven to her that he loves her and he's going to make sure she's taken care of. Mm -hmm. hmm? Why do you think, we go back, let's look at a Bible example. Why do you think that Sarah was willing to follow, Sarah was willing to follow Abram? He had proven himself to, he didn't even know where he was going. <laughs> Come on, all my military families in the house, prior military families. We're PCS and where? I don't know yet. Oh, so I'm supposed to pack stuff up and follow you. Okay. Abram had proven to her she followed him. Okay. And she learned to follow God too. You know, at first that she was following him, but then she began to follow God for herself. Okay. All right. Therefore, as, as, the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be into their own husbands and everything. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. We as husbands are supposed to love our wives and give ourselves for them. Yes. Amen. Are you here? Yes. Yeah. Hey, getting quiet. That he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Jesus gave himself for us to make us better. Are we here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Give yourself for your wife to help her to be better. Okay. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Oh, pastor, you can just pass on by that one. Come on now. Do you hate yourself? I hope not. You don't have to. Huh? Man, if you're hungry, did you, did you feed yourself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> pastor. Huh? If you need a haircut, do you go get a haircut? You need to clip your toenails. Do you clip your toenails? You get gross now, Pastor. You take care of yourself, don't you? Mm -hmm. I hope so. Please do. Please take a shower. <laughs> Especially if you're standing around here. Wash yourself. Keep yourself. Okay, we do that to ourselves. Right? So why wouldn't we make sure that our wife is taken care of? Right. Now he's using this natural example. It, the man takes care of his own body. Why doesn't he make sure his wife is taken care of? She's part of him. I don't want my wife running around with raggedy clothes. I don't want to wear raggedy clothes. Why would I want her to wear raggedy clothes? Right. I, I'll not buy stuff and let her buy something. Yes. She said, honey, you need to get some white shirts. I'm, I'm going to go get, I need to get some, a couple of blouses. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll be out in the car. Huh? Because she needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. That's my responsibility as a husband. Yes. I'm supposed to take care of her the way that Jesus takes care of the church. Yes. When you have a need as a Christian and you pray, does God meet the need? Yes. Yes, he does. God answers your prayer. God blesses you. So if a wife asks the husband for something, shouldn't he try to provide for her and be a blessing to her? Mm -hmm. The way that God is to us? See, that selfishness stuff has to go out the window. Okay, you're one flesh. Ain't no woman gonna tell me what to do. Well, it ain't no matter her telling you what to do. But you know what? They have needs. And they're not stupid. Right. Man, you want... I want to call my wife stupid and she married me? <laughs> huh? 
No, I think she's pretty <laughs> smart. <laughs> okay, so all men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh. We're going to stop right here at the end of Ephesians because we're quite a bit over it, but that's okay. But nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we were members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Okay, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And it's going to stop right here. And the wife see that she reverence. You know what that means? Respect. Amen. Okay, he's not your little boy. He's your husband. And just like you, he shouldn't treat you like you're stupid. You shouldn't treat him that way either. Amen. You're to respect that man. You know, there's a lot of men that won't do what he did. Are you here? There's a lot of men. I'll marry you. Are you crazy? No, all I want to do is have sex with you. And if you get pregnant, that's your problem. I'll find, I get done messing with you and getting what I want from you and I get kind of used to it, I'm going to go find me some new stuff and just leave you. What, what do you mean love you? I was just saying that so I could get you in the bed. Now, I know that I'm just going on and none of this really happens, ever happens. All the time. What do you think? All these girls running around with babies and no husbands. You got a man who waited for you, married you, provides. Well, I work too. Praise God. But so does he for you. And you should respect that. Okay, it's a, it's a, the two become one flesh. You know, you have, you have a, a, someone that was willing to marry you and, and let's be honest. Okay, they've stayed with us. We've put up with each other having to grow and change. Yes. Okay. God's going to help you keep working on it. Right. Grow together, okay? Love one another. Treat one another with respect, especially if you're Christians. You know, if you're Christian, you are married to God's daughter or you are married to God's son if you're a woman. That's just not some dude. That's God's child. Okay? Let's treat each other like we are God's children. Amen. So we're going to stop right there, and Lord willing, we'll maybe uh, continue on teaching some of this if you want to next Wednesday. You now we've made light of some things, but you know God is concerned about every aspect of our life, and this is real life. Yes. Okay. God has all the bases covered. Yes. And if we will learn what the Bible teaches and and how God says things are to be, brother and sister, let me tell you, it works. Okay, it works. Okay, so we'll stop right there. We're going to go ahead and dismiss the Bible study. And Reverend Walker, will you dismiss us? And we'll pray over the refreshments tonight. Again, Friday night, we'll do something with the single Marines and sailors. Saturday night, we have church at 730. Sunday morning, 830. Okay, God bless you is our prayer. Let's go ahead and dismiss tonight. And will you dismiss us, please? Thank you, Lord God, for the word of God for us tonight. Help us to take heed, to grow in your grace, in your knowledge, to be hearers and doers of your word. And Lord Father God, I ask that you bless the fellowship tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray these things. Amen. Amen. Amen.